Okay, who asked this question about underdog? They drink that. So I got a question here. Okay, your question about underdog has brought you to the point where now you get to experience a chaos moment. Now, you're going to do this with it, and we're going to ask a question, and you listen to him, and he's going to answer your question for you, but if, if we were to just answer it here, you wouldn't be able to really understand it. You need to go somewhere else before you can really understand this very Through another place from here. A better world than this. And incidentally, a whippet is a kind of little dog. Well, let's get it's started. Like a little dog. You know that? It's kind of weird. Go ahead. Do that. It's a whippet. The world's first black superhero. Oh no. Not. You'll see. Because it's not necessarily what you do that makes you a hero, but whether or not you are seen as one by others. Therefore, I say up to you. Go forth and do that which will make others look to you to be their hero. Okay, if a monk that has taken a vow of silence talks in his sleep. We've got hillbillies. Security. I think that they're drunk again. I'm afraid they're they're abusing themselves. This is is not good. They generally reside overhead in that tiny tinny trailer. They seem to be engaged in some sort of dispute. Oh dear, spousal abuse is going on. Show here. How unseemly. They are, but perhaps they're making up. They're, they're, uh, they're moral. Maybe more babies. Yes, it does. It's, there's nothing like a, a good fight to get you started. Yeah! A good fight to clear the air. As apparently it has for our rusticated pair. The overhead roof dwelling hillbillies. Thank you so much, Justin. You know, the trail is rocking. <laughs> Hal, I'm going to ask you a question now. Yo. How can you, like, answer questions when you're on with it? It's a job, chicken. <laughs> It's all I've got. <laughs> okay, how many, uh, who, how many? Okay. How many? How many roads must a man walk down? Our sands are on the Red Sea shore, where Israel's tents do shine so bright. Hello, old friend. <laughs> So, you want to hear this? It's going good later. Oh, I'll take it. Bye, bye, bye. This show is really going to the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get fucked. Just 
his luck to catch it at the top, but he can't. because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had got no business being there after the day was done. How very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet, as wet could be. The air was dry as dry. You could not see a bird because no bird was in the sky. No clouds were flying overhead. There were no clouds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at them, but never a word, he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat, and this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. <laughs> then four more oysters hurried up, and then another four, and thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more, all scrambling through the frothy waves and hopping to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so until they came onto a spot conveniently low. And there the little oysters stood about them in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cry, before we have our chat, for some of us are out of breath and all of us are fat. No hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but, cut us another slice. I wish you were not half so deaf, I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick, after we've brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but, 
the waters spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size. Holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, we've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd, because they eaten every one. <laughs> Thank you.